Well, hi, students, and welcome back to BA 1152 Quality Tools. Congratulations, and thank you for finishing the syllabus orientation quiz and getting that out of the way. So that was your, um, <clears throat> excuse me, ticket into the into the class. Um, and so this is from the uh, homepage here. I'm going to go into learning modules and spend some time going over what is going to happen in module one. So before I do that, I want to tell you that at the very bottom of all the learning modules, so what you'll see underneath module one, is some optional content that I collected that was kind of left over from two other people who taught this class. When I was given this class, I redesigned it in a way that it covers um, only processes and the seven quality tools. The other people who taught the class prior incorporated some other things that I couldn't fit into here and it really didn't meet the outcomes. But it, that doesn't mean it's not valuable. So I recommend that you go through this module and just look at what's there and see if you can use it in, in submitting your homework or in using in anything in your life that's there for you and you may do it, use it as you wish. Okay, so in module one, uh, let's get started. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so uh, welcome to Quality Tools. This is a one credit class and they run periodically and frequently throughout the year depending on enrollment. Um, this is the third in this series. If you were not, in um, our first two classes, BA 1150 and BA 1151, they are running, again, the exact same class in the exact same format, only in a three-week uh, format uh, when this term is over. And I will be selling more information about that as the term progresses and as registration uh, builds up. So um, if, you do, if you weren't with us, you missed a whole lot. So I, I would really welcome you into the classes. Okay. So the optional text, which is the picture on the welcome page, um, tells us about continuous quality improvement and the use of the correct tool. Organizations around the world are using continuous quality improvement, CQI, as their strategy to bring about dramatic changes in their operations. Their purpose is to stay competitive in a world of constant communication and technological advancement. We see that every day. We see instant communication. People cannot put their phones down. They're chatting. They're Instagramming. They're, they're Facebooking. They're MySpacing, whatever they're doing. But we have instant global 24-7 communication, and technology is advancing before you can blink. So it's important to use this continuous quality improvement to stay ahead of it. And like I said, I like this part uh, as a strategy to bring about dramatic changes. So an organization needs to meet or exceed customer expectations while maintaining a cost competitive position. So continuous quality improvement is a systematic uh, organization wide approach for continually improving all processes that deliver quality products and services. And it is the main strategy many organizations are adopting to meet today's challenges and to prepare for those down the road. So the seven quality tools. Um, they're in the introductory readings, um, are the flow chart, histogram, cause and effect diagram, check sheet, scattergram, control charts, and Pareto charts. So six of these are used when working with numbers and the cause and effect or fishbone is used when working with ideas. So we're going to explore all of them. You will have homework. You will have an opportunity to create and submit one, e one each of these charts. Okay. Or graphs or grams or whatever you have. Okay. So, but what do we have and what are we doing with them? How do we know what to do? So the first thing we have to do is a SIPOC diagram. So you need to know what you're going to do before you choose the tools. Okay. So there is the lecture video. I'm going to go over this. Uh, articles, videos, and then two discussions and um, the reflection journal and a SIPOC, SIPOC diagram. So uh, this module closes at 10 o'clock and that date is wrong. I will fix that by the time you see it. I apologize. Um, I thought I caught all of those. Okay, this is this video, except it's last time's video, and I, I will have this updated. I purposely leave that there because it's a placeholder. Okay, so the readings uh, talk about the tool selector chart. So there's a PDF. There are di different readings here. The seven basic tools of quality. This is based on from Wikipedia. 
process improvement and product improvement. But what we have to look at is what is a process? So if we look at Merriam-Webster's di dictionary, they describe a process, a natural phenomenon marked by gradual changes that lead toward a particular result. A continuing natural or biological activity, okay, those are more like a natural phenomenon, a natural activity, okay, so more like nature, okay. But then we get down here, and let's look at this. A series of actions or operations conducing to an end, a continuous operation or treatment, especially in manufacture. Okay, and then the rest gets into legal. Okay, so a process. Hmm. And then why are processes important? Why is a process viewpoint important? And here are some methodologies. So, this, so there's some things. I don't know if you've ever heard of Six Sigma. Um, very, very business-like, very, very quality, quality. So there's some information there for you to read. Okay. So this looks like a lot of videos, but it's not. I mean, it is, but it's not. Um, but there's a lot to tell you about what to do and what processes are, what lean management is, and how to do the SIPOC diagram. Okay. So what is a process? What are the seven points? So we, we have a lot to do in the intro here. It's like when you first start school. The first couple of days, there's so much to do to go over the syllabus and, and get acclimated and everything, and then it all kind of flows. So that's what we're doing here. So kind of spot check these. I certainly do not expect you to watch, like this video is 36 minutes long. Spot check it. Okay, get an idea of what they're saying. Most of these are two minutes. Um, this one is nine minutes. But, but these longer, longer videos, I do not expect you to watch 36 minutes. Just get an idea. We're not going to cover Six Sigma in here, but it's important that you know what it is. And then this is what is a SIPOC diagram. Okay, so uh, what are about class introduction? So it's important that we get to know each other since we're going to be working together. So um, to just tell us uh, why did you take this class? What are your expectations? What do you do on a daily basis functionally? What do you do functionally at work, home, or school? Okay, so if you say, well, I'm a student, that's not what you do functionally. I attend classes, I take notes, I do homework, I, I, you know, submit assignments and things like that. And what do you hope to achieve after finishing this class on, on quality tools? Um, many of you will not know what this is. I don't know what you know about quality tools. So what, what kind of why did you take this class and what do you expect to get out of it? And what do you think you're going to have when you get to the end? All right. Now, the journal is for me. Um, it's another introduction. It's kind of like a, 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 a teacher uh, office hour kind of thing. So I want to know about your work and or school experience. What are you studying and why? Why are you taking this class? And if you say I needed a one credit class, that's a perfectly acceptable answer because sometimes we just need that. Why do you think quality improvement is important in our lives? What are you looking to improve by taking this course? What will you do with what you learn and why is that important to you? What do you what do you think quality tools are and how do you plan to use them? Any other information about what you need me to know about you? Just talk to me. What one of the things I want you to understand in this class is you cannot say too much. Okay? When you're answering an assignment, it it really you just keep going. Okay, tell me. I always feel when people give me a short response one of two things happened. They waited till the last minute and they will turn in a, a poorer quality assignment to get something in. Or they they didn't feel that what they had to say was of value. I want to hear from you. I want, give me a scenario. Give me, I saw a movie where this happened. I saw a TV show where this happened. Um, that kind of thing. And make sure you ask questions, okay? The module one discussion, though, this pertains to the work here. Um, so this one is really cool. So we're talking about processes. So choose a daily task that you do and list the steps. Be very specific. as Like write it down as though you're leaving instructions for somebody to do it. Okay. And it should have at least five t steps. I don't care if it's sorting laundry, making coffee, uh, filling the copier, changing the copier toner, answering the phone. Something that has at least five steps. Changing a diaper. I'll buy it. Okay. But something, you're writing down instructions that very specifically of telling someone how to do a daily task that is a process. 
making coffee, loading the dishwasher, um, going to the bank. Does anybody go to the bank anymore? Um, any of those kinds of things. And then, so you, so you're going to have this discussion. Okay. So dear so-and-so, uh, this is how you make coffee. Okay. And you have to be specific because this person doesn't know. So you have to be very, very specific. It should have at least five steps. Now then, then did you previously think of all the steps before, or were you just going through the motions? Did you have to consult your own list to do that same task? What would happen if a step were omitted or done out of order? What quality tools could be used in this process? Because you've already read a little bit about quality tools, okay? So then I, what I don't want, I don't ever, ever want is somebody to just answer each question separately, okay? I want this to be, I, I've given you a series of questions and, and, and an assignment, and I want it in the, I mean, you should have your tasks listed out, the, the first part. So the five, at least five steps of the task, and then, you know, and then you can start at the paragraphs. I never thought about this before. I've always just done it. Now that I've had to relate how to make coffee, I realized that I do all these things and I didn't know how involved it was. No, you cannot put this out of order. You cannot start it without putting the water in. Um, and then, and then ass assess what quality tool could be used. So make it all in paragraphs that you're answering me in a conversation and do not attach a document to a, a discussion or a journal, okay? Um, and then we're going to learn about SIPOC diagrams, okay? So there are, hold on one second, let me get to this. Okay, I thought I had this, this open and I didn't, so I apologize for, I took a pause, okay? So um, in a process improvement, SIPOC, sometimes also COPPIS, is a tool that summarizes the inputs and outputs of one or more processes in a table form. It is used to define a business process from beginning to end before work begins. So now you kind of see in your discussion, you're, you're defining what, what you're coming up with the tasks, and then you're going to do a SIPOC diagram. So the acronym SIPOC stands for suppliers, inputs, processes, outputs, and customers. So if you think about this, I'm just going to keep using making coffee. Okay. So you're going to use who's the supplier. Well, the supplier could be the coffee company. It could be you. The input would be the water, the coffee grounds, anything else that you put in there. The process are the steps. The output is the coffee and the customers are the consumers. Okay. So let me, okay. So in automobile repair, this is a SIPOC. So the supplier is the vehicle owner, the customer service rep. So who are all the people? So when you're doing yours, if you're doing coffee, the supplier is the coffee company, the grocery store. Um, uh, well, there used to be a commercial where there was this guy, Juan Valdez, who did coffee. He picked the coffee beans, like I, I, but I don't think they use him anymore. So you pick, pick out all the suppliers. The supplier would also be you, the grocery store, you. So you could have three or four suppliers if you're doing coffee. And then the input is the water, the coffee, the electricity, the coffee maker, the coffee, you know, that kind of thing. So that's what this is. And then um, when I went, not the cat. No, it was this other thing. Sorry. Forget the kitty with the glasses. So then I was trying to make this. Um, let me do images here. Um, you put it in a... I think this was one of them. You put it in that, that form where it's a chart. Okay. So that's what you're going to do. So in your, in your, um, uh, discussion, you're going to list the steps and then you're going to look at your processes and do your SIPOC diagram. Okay. There's plenty of information here about it. And here is your assignment. Okay. Think about a sequence of work activities that you do on a regular basis. This can be based on your discussion process. Okay. It can be exactly the same thing. So put a name to the process by identif identifying it in a, a verb and noun form. So if you're talking about, if your day-to-day -day work might involve all the steps of a process that pays vendors, then your name, the name for your process might be pay vendors. If I were doing it for the one that I just said, it would be make coffee. So look at the process of make coffee or load dishwasher, sort laundry, 
bake cake, okay, anything like that, and then make all the list of those, se those steps. Now, the difference between these two is the one that you did for the discussion are just the, the steps and the questions that I asked you here. This is much more specific. Um, you're going to make a list. You're going to have a discussion point. Uh, a I'm sorry, a decision point. So this information will help you. You can do it in Excel. You can do it in Word tables. And um, uh, there's some information here, but here's a template. You can use Word. Um, there, the uh, One of the people who taught this, actually, later on as we go through, he will show you how to do some of these forms and charts and graphs and grams in Word, Excel, PowerPoint, going all the way back to almost 2007. So those are the things you have to do. It looks like a lot, and I know there's a lot of reading, but it's important that you understand what quality tools are and what processes are and how to define a process. So this module, because we have the two discussions, the journal and the assignment, is worth 190 points. So please don't miss anything. Um, and then, as you know from the... Um, navigation video that you contact me by going through messages right here and let me know if you have any questions. My office hours will be Mondays and Tuesdays from 7.30 to 8 and I am happy to help you. Please don't make this harder than it is. Just all you're looking at right now is a process and if you use the same process for the discussion and the assignment, that is completely okay. All right, have a fabulous week and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye!